In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we use something called the quadratic formula in order to solve quadratic equations. So first of all, let's begin with the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula states that x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Now don't worry, you're not going to be expected to remember the quadratic formula. It's included on the equation sheet for the algebra topic. But what we do need to know is how to apply that equation in order to find the roots of x which make a quadratic equation true. So let's next look at an example of a quadratic equation such as 2x squared plus 3x plus 4 equals 0. Now the way that this links in with the quadratic formula is that any quadratic equation can be written in the form ax squared, where a is the coefficient of x squared, plus bx, where b is the coefficient of x, plus c, where c is the term that doesn't contain x. So in the example above, we can see that we have a value of a equaling 2, we have a value of b equaling 3, and we have a value of c equaling 4. We could then apply the quadratic formula in order to find the values of x, which make this equation at the top here true. So there'll be certain values of x which, when inputted into this equation, so 2x squared plus 3x plus 4, would give us 0 for certain values of x. And there's actually going to be two of those. Let's look at this with a specific example. So once again, we've got our quadratic formula, which states that x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And the equation that we're going to solve is the following. 7x squared plus 8x plus 1 equals 0. So what we can see is we've got a value of a of 7. We've got a value of b of 8 and we've got a value of c equaling 1. So we're going to apply those numbers into our quadratic formula. We've got x equals, well b is 8, so we've got minus 8 plus or minus the square root of b squared, well b is 8 again, 8 times 8 or 8 squared is 64, minus, we've got 4 times a times c, well 4 times 7 is 28 times c or times 1 is just 28. So we've got 64 minus 28. All divided by 2a, well a is 7, 2 times 7 is 14. All I've done is I've put our numbers for a, b and c into the quadratic formula. Next let's simplify this. We've got x equals minus 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 28. Well, 64 minus 28 is 36, all divided by 14. Now we can simplify this further because the square root of 36 is actually 6. So now we can say that x equals minus 8 plus or minus 6, all divided by 14. This plus or minus tells us that there's actually two solutions to this formula or to this equation. One solution is that x equals minus 8 plus 6 divided by 14. Well, minus 8 plus 6 is minus 2. Divided by 14 gives us minus 1 over 7. But there's a second solution which tells us that x equals minus 8 minus 6 over 14. Well, minus 8 minus 6 is minus 14. Minus 14 divided by 14 is just minus 1. So there's two values of x which when inputted into this equation give us an answer of 0. If we were to put minus a seventh into that equation we would get 7 times minus a seventh squared plus 8 times minus a seventh plus 1 would give us 0. And if we were to put minus 1 into that formula we would get 7 times minus 1 squared plus 8 times minus 1 plus 1 would give us 0. I'll show you the example using minus 1 as it's a little more straightforward but really just to get across a point here. We've got 7 times minus 1 squared 
plus 8 times minus 1 plus 1. Well, 7 times minus 1 squared. Minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. 7 times 1 is just 7. We've got 8 times minus 1. Well, 8 times minus 1 is minus 8 plus 1. Hopefully you can see there that 7 minus 8 plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, our roots of this equation are x equals minus 1 over 7 and x equals minus 1. Now we're going to look at a second example. This time we're going to solve the equation 3x squared minus 6x plus 2 equals 0. We're going to start by acknowledging that a equals 3, b equals minus 6, and c equals 2. And we're also going to note down our quadratic formula, which says that x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. The next step is to input our values. So we've got x equals minus b. Well, b is minus 6, so minus b is just going to be 6, plus or minus the square root. Well, b squared minus 6 times minus 6 is the same as 6 times 6, so 36, minus 4ac, minus 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, so minus 24, all divided by 2a, 2 times 3 is 6. Next we can simplify that, so we get x equals 6 plus or minus the square root of 12, all divided by 6. But unfortunately in this case you'll see that the square root of 12 is not going to give us a nice even number. The square root of 12 is actually 3.464 to 3 decimal places. So we're going to get 6 plus or minus 3.464 all divided by 6. And once again there's two solutions to the equation at the top there. There's two solutions or two values of x which will give us an answer of 0. One of them is going to be 6 plus 3.464 divided by 6, which is 6 plus 3.464 equals, divided by 6 equals, again a decimal, 1.577. And the second value of x, which would give 0 in that equation at the top there, is 6 minus 3.464 divided by 6, which this time gives us 6 minus 3.464 divided by 6, gives us an answer of 0.423. Okay, so each of those values of x, when inputted into the equation at the top there, would give us an answer of 0. A question may ask you to factorise that original equation at the top there. And by factorising, if you recall from the previous video, what we mean is putting it into brackets in such a form that x plus or minus a number times x plus or not minus a number in a second bracket gives us 0. For that equation at the bottom to be true, this bracket here must equal 0, and this bracket here must equal 0, because anything times 0 gives us 0. We've just said when x equals 1.577, the, the equation at the top equals 0. Therefore, if x equals 1.577, then x minus 1.577 is going to give us 0 on that first bracket. And we've also said that when x equals 0 0.423, that equation at the top equals 0. Therefore, if this second bracket needs to be 0, then x minus 0 0.423 must also equal 0.